What furniture ought to go in the center? Oh yeah, uh, a fridge. What? That's not a fridge. What about along the walls of the room? Um, a washing machine on the walls for some reason. He's ignoring me. Oh, so it's a prison. So the thing is, he's making me make decisions, even though he's just going to do whatever he wants anyway. I'm pretty sure none of my choices make any difference. Yeah, I'm going to hit that. He's going to put it. Yeah, he's going to put a table. There's a bit more to this one, but still, it's not really communicating anything. It, it's kind of just weird for weirdness's sake. How's it going, everyone? Remote Bri, the one and only. And today we're playing The Beginner's Guide. I know absolutely nothing about this game besides for the fact that I guess it was made by the same dude who made the Stanley Parable. So that's good enough for me. As usual, like, subscribe, comment, share, and let's get into it. Please make sure audio is on. OK, hi there. Thank you very much for playing The Beginner's Guide. My name is Davey Reedon. I wrote The Stanley Parable. And while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Now these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff. And his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. Okay. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. It's a level for Counter-Strike. You can walk around here, by the way. And uh, mostly it's just Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. Fire. What I like is that even though he starts from the simple aesthetic of a desert town, he then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. And of course, it destroys the illusion that this actually is a desert town, and instead this level becomes a kind of calling card from its creator. It's like a reminder that this video game was constructed by a real person. And it kind of makes you wonder, what was going through his head as he was building this? Okay. This is what I like about all of Coda's games. I mean, not that they're all fascinating as games, but that they are all going to give us access to their creator. I want us to see past the games themselves. I want to get to know who this human being really is. Okay. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So, it's 2008, Coda starts making these games, and he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them onto the internet, he just makes them and then immediately abandons them and they sit on his computer forever. And I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh, at one point he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. Aww. So, you know, this was just how he worked. He tended to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made. Until suddenly one day, he just stopped. In 2011, that was it. He made his last game, and then he hasn't made another one since. And that's why I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together. I find his games powerful and interesting, and I'd like this collection to reach him, to maybe encourage him to start creating again. And if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Coda. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d-a-v-e-y-w-r-e-d-e-n at gmail.com. Okay, that's about it for introduction. Let's take a look at Coda's first You're just gonna plug your shit into my video? I'll show you the date that it was completed. This first one was made in November 2008. Okay, what we got? Whisper Machine? This game is called Escape from Whisper, and it's one of the more generic games you'll see from Coda. So Coda was in here going crazy for about three years, and then he he stopped, I guess. Security call breached. Possible alien life form. What? Possible alien? It kind of looks like this game was abandoned mid-development. Oh. For instance, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere, but then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. You can't even reload the gun when you run out of bullets. But ultimately, we don't really know. Maybe Coda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. And I think that we should talk about his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. Okay. 
beginning. Facts. I love how you can see the bottom of the universe from this room. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right, Coda. That man, Coda was going crazy, man. Leave him alone, man. That man was in the studio going nuts. Okay. Apparently, this space station has a labyrinth on it. I, uh, sure, I don't know. There's really no reason for it that I've ever been able to discern, so in the interest of time, I'm just going to skip you on past it. Wow, thank you, bro. Okay, this is the part that's interesting. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. Okay, what else? You there, in the engine room. You could save us all. That beam is powering the whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat signature. If you... Your body could stop the beam. It's so much to ask, but for all of our lives, would you do it? Could you give yourself? No? No! Whatever. Let me pause here for a second. What you just experienced, stepping into the beam and then dying, is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. Okay. Okay. And you can see the bottom of the, the universe. you to start floating. And this is an important moment for him. Because yes, this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it. Like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Or this floating could be the afterlife, a peaceful place, juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that you've just had to traverse. Okay. I, I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking, but what's clear is that after making this, something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind. All right, the past was behind her. Okay. Can I move though, please? Oh, let me guess. That's like a part of the game. Oh, I have to jump, right? I can only jump. You can't move at all. So try walking backwards. Yep. In this game, you can only walk backwards. This is... I don't like this at all. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is like the ultimate scary game, Loki. So it's a short and relatively minimalist experiment combining motion and narrative. It is less advanced than the previous game, but actually it seems to be more focused, more complete. Code is trying to give it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on a pre-existing trope. That is facts right there. I don't like this. When she stops and looks... Oh wait, I didn't read the other stuff. Now I gotta go back. The dude was talking and I got distracted. So the first thing says, the past was behind her. Why does the future keep changing, but the future could not be seen? Or maybe I read those in the wrong order. I like how he put these two, like on these corners of the, the wall, like, you know, like here, and then, you know, wait, this corner. So that when you back into it like this, you can't see it and then you hit the wall and you're like, oh, I got to turn around. So you read this naturally and then you're supposed to back up and read these and then look around and then see you got to go that way. And then we go this way. Hit a wall or turn. When she stops and looks, it becomes clearer. But if the future is always behind her, how will she find the strength? I don't want to turn around. I hate hitting a wall. It's a short little thought. It says what it wants to say, and then it ends. Didn't need anything more than that. Which to me is why it works, because it gets out quick. Okay, next one. Okay, fair enough. That's why it w Um, no, 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 no. No! 
You are now entering what? What am I entering? No, man, no. And that's it. Okay, the meaning of this game won't be clear just yet. Please be patient with me for a few more games and I promise you'll see what makes it interesting. Oftentimes, Koda would put bizarre titles like this one at the start of his games. Okay. I wish I'd known him at the time that he was making these early games. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. Once he stopped work on a game, like, that was it. It was dead to him. And I don't agree with that at all, but what are you gonna do? Yeah. What you gonna, what you gonna do? Once you've been slowed to an absolute crawl, the door at the top of the stairs opens. So why, if Code is not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening the door at all? Well, to show you, I'm modifying the game here so that when you press enter, it'll bring you back up to full speed so you can enter the door for yourself. Okay. Dude, I don't like this, man. I really don't like this. What is going on, man? What? A room that's warm and nice and filled with little ideas for games. Aww. Stand on an X staring at a bear for Cody three hours. Tell me that he didn't mind if people thought of him as cold or distant. He said that he knew that he was actually a vibrant and compassionate person, but that it takes time to really see that. It can be a very slow climb to get there. Okay. Okay, that's fire. You start in a small room and can I read it? Fuck. Ready, set, fish. But. Well, this is new for Coda. It's an actual puzzle. Go ahead and see if you can solve it. He thinks I can't solve this easy ass bullshit. This shit easy as fuck, bro. You know, I played Super Liminal, Viewfinder, Stanley Parable, and you think I cannot solve this puzzle, man? You are out of your goddamn mind. You dweeb, nerd. Wait, I know how to do it. You flip it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, now we're sir. trapped. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now we're trapped. Yes, That's sir. the puzzle right there. Yes, sir. Oh, and then you hit this. Yes, sir. yes, sir. We're going to see this puzzle again soon. We're gonna see it a lot. We're gonna see it a lot, okay? Fair enough. So that seems to be it, right? You walk down a corridor, you solve the puzzle, you get to the end. Simple enough. All right, now I'm going to modify the game again so that when you press enter, it'll remove all of the walls from this room. Wow. How about that? There was more to it than we had any way of knowing. I actually find it funny that this game comes after the stairs game since they essentially convey the opposite idea. So, uh, in the stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. And then, in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic outer world. Either way, I think that the point is the same. Is that most of the time, you don't get to know what you're missing. Or even that you're missing anything. That's not your role as a player. So if your role here is not to understand, then what is it? Oh, we're back here. I hate this. You are now exiting? Uh -huh. So, this, combined with the entering game from earlier, tells us that Coda believes his games are connected somehow. It could even be that the stairs game and the puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. There's a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role in. Some larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've seen all of them. And once we have, we can step back and start to understand what exactly that bigger picture is. Okay, I'm on board with this game. We got the great lovely descent. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Let's talk about video game development for a second. Every video game runs on what's called an engine, yep. which determines what the game can and cannot do. So in other words, the engine is a set of tools for game development. Yep. Coda is using an engine called Source. Like all engines, Source has certain things that it does well, and it has certain things that it does poorly. One of the things that it does very well is boxy linear corridors. Okay. That's why so many of Coda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms, is just because he's working with what the engine does well. The tools available to the creator shape what kinds of creative work they're going to end up making. 
you might consider paying attention to the architecture in Coda's games to notice how they seem to stem from an engine that's very good at producing linear boxy corridors. Oh, I did not know that existed. Can I go in here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, let's get it. Wait, let's get, wait, can I go? Okay, sweet. Oh, nice. That's something. Oh yeah, we got this. We got this. Oh, but I can just jump all the way down. Yes, sir. 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 Okay, sweet. Jump, jump again. Jump again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No. Okay, sweet. Oh, we could have just jumped from the, you know, from the top and made it all the way down here. Bump, 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 going down the stairs. Down the stairs. Yeah, down the stairs. Down the stairs. Is something chasing me? Whoa. I don't like this music. What? What? Wait. I'm going this way. I can't go that way? What about this way? I don't like this music, man. This prison, funny enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. If you don't mind, I think we're gonna skip that. Okay. This is something that he and I used to argue about a lot. You know, whether a game ought to actually be playable, whether it means anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable and accessible? And so we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games that was full of hundreds of individual games, each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. Okay. Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. There wasn't. That's tough. So that man was really out here just designing games. That's crazy. Okay, Coda. I feel you, I get your argument. It's the puzzle again with the exact same solution as the last time. Oh, thank you, bro. There's still no clear indication of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. Listen. Here, Coda begins using a kind of dialogue system that he fashioned out of the engine's chat capabilities. Use the one, two, three buttons on your keyboard to respond. Okay, you come from above. What was up there? The world was stamped with whiteness. Okay, I'm not sure how I feel about that one. Yes, there was an enormous prison I spent hours in. Yes, there was these floating colored blocks. Floating colored blocks, yes. I prefer not to tell you. Yeah. You don't understand. We're trapped here. That puzzle's our only escape. We need to get through it. Ooh. You think you want to get through, but trust me, you don't. Oh no, but I do. We do. We need to get there. It's the most important thing in the world. We have to escape this prison. There must be an ending. I promise you, there's nothing that I want more. I think that might be what he said. Oh, you can't even see it because I'm over here in the way. <laughs> That's hilarious. I won't let you go up there, hose. Hello, how did you get here? Was there a puzzle you had to pass through? No, I've been right here this entire time. I suggest you go see the puzzle sometime. It's not meant to be solved, but you can sit in the black space in the middle. What happens if I solve it? Not sure, but if you have any suspicion, what you'll find won't be worth it take, worth what it takes or whatever. I didn't get to read it. Whoops. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep it pushing. Keep it moving. Moving. And so we make one last descent down to the final floor of the level. Okay. What we got, what we got. All right, we got a, a lamp in the middle. Okay, I can't tell you quite why, but for some reason, Coda fixates on this lamppost. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. I'll tell you what I think. 
Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. He wants the work to be leading to something. He wants a destination, which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. We're going to see it in the work as well. His games are just going to become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. All right, Coda, bet, say less. This is kind of fire. We're just playing through a bunch of some dude's games. Everyone needs to make a game like this, like every game dev. That's fire. This game is connected to the internet. As you walk around, you can leave notes. All notes you see are left by other players. Say less. Oh, it's like Elden Ring. Nice room, not. So first off, I'm sure you can deduce this. How do you beat this, this game? game? Is not connected to the internet. All of the notes that you're gonna see have been written by Coda. This was actually the first game of his that I ever played. This was shortly after I met him at a weekend game jam in Sacramento, where I grew up. I saw him working on this very level, and it was just so different from anything that anyone else was doing. So no right point to like, this. <laughs> I have to be. In retrospect, I think I was probably a bit too pushy trying to get his attention. Uh, I was over enthusiastic, but he was very gracious about it and very patient with me. And I cooled off eventually. Okay. Hello. Reasonable. Oh, feel free to skip over any of these notes if they're not doing anything for you. Nothing extra is going to happen if you read all of them. Either way, to me, they convey a sense of loneliness. I see this person who's filled with thoughts and feelings and beliefs and has no way to express them except as scattered and unheard voices in a game that wasn't meant to be played. I want to tell you a secret. Once upon a time, I but did. It's ironic, isn't it? that in playing this game and seeing how alone Coda often felt, that we get to know him better and actually kind of connect. Balls. <laughs> and I have to be honest with you. This idea is really seductive to me, that I could just play someone's game and see the voices in their head and, and get to know them better and have to do less of the messy in-person socializing. I could just get to know you through your work. We're and running out of space. Like Soon we will suffocate. It felt like they let me have that connection. I felt as though he was inviting me personally into his world. And then I feel less lonely too. Someday I will meet the person who made this. I help people because of the internal good feeling I get. Oh, that art looks crazy. Forget the messages, I want the art. Art, art, art. This has to be the thumbnail. Thumbnail moment? I feel it coming. I feel it coming. I feel it coming, babe. Fire. Thumbnail moment. Thumbnail moment. I'm trying to get it. I'm gonna get, I got it. I think I got it. I think I got it. Wait. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> At the end of this level, we're going to see the puzzle again. And here, I'll tell you what I think the puzzle means. Each of these games represents an idea that was on Coda's mind at the time that he was making it. And the puzzle is a way of closing the door on a previous chapter of his life before moving on to the next one. In each of his games, after exploring a theme that, you know, he might find difficult, Coda can then place this puzzle that he knows has a reliable solution, he understands exactly how it works, and so it gives him a simple mechanism for moving on. And because there's this dark area between the doors, a space between spaces, before you move on, you get to pause. Just for a moment, a few seconds to reflect on and let go of the events that led you here, to step back and connect the pieces together, to grasp at that elusive bigger picture. Okay, I feel it. That's a, you know, solid interpretation. I'm on board, I'm on board. What the fu- What? Are you there? Please say something. It can be anything. I just need you to say something. Talk to me, please. What are you doing? Speak something. Speak. Wait. 
Yeah, wait, speak, 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 speak. Maybe I should move myself from the corner. Okay, this one is tough. It's gonna kind of just spin its own wheels for a few minutes. Hang with it. Yeah. Yeah. Check it. Check, check, check it. Ooh, this house is nice. Check, check it. Ooh, this house is nice. Check, check it. Ooh, ooh this house. Uh, <laughs> Man, I almost had it. You guys felt what I was trying to do, though. Let's get it. Let's get it. Okay. So, this is it. The whole game. And there's nothing that's particularly interesting about it. You just walk to the end of a hallway. Except, for some reason, Coda gets really fixated on this prison that has all of this modern furniture. And I don't know why, but he decides he needs to revisit this prison. He's gonna start over, use the same assets, turn it into something else. Okay, cool. Here's version two. Okay, it's a prison. You can see the light. What furniture ought to go in the center of the room? Is what it says. A TV with surround sound or a refrigerator? Put a giant hole in the ground? A refrigerator? Wait, hold up, wait, hold up. Before we do that, I gotta move myself to the other side. I gotta like, the game is making me break my one rule of going to the other side. That's crazy. How are people gonna respect me if I'm going to the other side? And I gotta flip myself? I'm gonna look weird. Everyone's gonna be like, whoa, you dude, you look weird when you're flipped. I know, that's how I feel. I feel weird when I'm flipped. Okay, well, this is so strange. This is strange. This is strange. Okay, we're flipped. We're flopped and we're flapped. We're floped. What furniture ought to go in the center? Oh yeah, uh, a fridge. What, that's not a fridge. What about along the walls of the room? Um, a washing machine on the walls for some reason. He's ignoring me. I think we should light this room up. So it's not gonna get me what I want. Tesla coils, that's what I want. A lamp, a table, you need a table. Oh, so it's a prison. So the thing is, he's making me make decisions even though he's just gonna do whatever he wants anyway. I'm pretty sure none of my choices make any difference. Yeah, I'm gonna hit that. He's gonna put it, yeah, he's gonna put a table. There's a bit more to this one, but still, it's not really communicating anything. It, it's kind of just weird for weirdness's sake. So, okay, he throws it out and starts over. This time he comes at the prison idea from a different direction. Hello, please walk forward. Don't tell me what to do. You walk forward. Follow the instructions carefully. Take care that you remember each step. Nice. Okay, wait, then what? Good, go over to the photo frame and click to turn it slightly. Now turn the floor lamp in the room off and then turn it back on. Off, on. Now go to the left side sofa, move it over a little. Finally touch the shelves. Are those the shelves? That's it. In a real prison, the escape will now open. Return to the start to be taken back to your prison. I don't buy it. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. I'm, I'm, I'm just not. And of course, now the table is gone and you can't begin the chain of events to escape. Here's a version where there are no bars, but you can't actually get to the well and then a version where the inside of the prison is the outside and the outside is the inside. Ah, that's hilarious. Let me just blink you real quick through a few more of these. That's hilarious. You really unloaded on this prison idea. There's nearly a dozen of them. Personally, I think it's awful to watch this, to see a person basically unraveling through their work. And for what? Like, at what point do you just go, eh, maybe there are game ideas other than this prison that I could be working on. But Coda doesn't have that voice telling you to stop that particular mechanism of defense against yourself. Without it, you just spiral. And so he keeps going and going and going and going and going. And then he hits on something. And he likes it. And that's it. He's done. He stops making prisons. This is the very last version of the prison game that he created. And the reason I think it works is that the prison is not actually in it.
Okay, so is Coda alive or is he dead? And then he's just this is like an homage to his work because I feel like he's kind of, you know, going off about Coda like he's, you know, he's R.I.P. I I just don't know if that's what's going on, you know. Okay, hop in, call someone. Hello, who is this? Hey, it's me. I'm you from after you escaped the prison. You're me dot 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 so you were trapped in this prison too it's a conversation and so this is what coda wants is to be able to talk to someone to share what's on his mind and to get some good advice from someone who knows but the irony is that even in this scenario you're still talking to yourself you know all of these games so far are coda talking to himself actually i'm already forgetting what being in the prison was like man that shit was whack really how long has it been since you got out only a few minutes something slight how could you possibly forget it Ooh, anything can seem infinite when you're drenched in it oh wait if you're me then did you get a call from another version of you when you were trapped Nope, I'm the first motherfucker. And can you tell me how to get out? Maybe I can come find you. What do I have to do to get out? All you have to do is be sincere. What? W will that free me? How, how does that work? Just be sincere. S sincere about what? That's exactly what you need to figure out in order to escape the prison. I can see why he considers this a fitting conclusion to the prison games. After all of the obsession and frustration, just to be told by someone you can trust that things are going to be okay. Wouldn't that be nice? That would be nice. And now I'm in the way of the loading icon. So what would it look like if Coda wanted to make a game about talking to someone other than himself? All right. To me, this environment is meant to represent Coda's puzzle with the two doors on either side and a dark transitional space between. Well, my goodness, I'm glad all heck that you showed up. I thought I might have to clean this entire house by myself and right miserable that would have been. Everyone knows lonesome hands well, make lousy the homes. Of the art is a step up from previous games, including this new and improved chat system, which he started using from this point on. From here on out, he begins putting much more effort into the visual polish of his work. And this particular game took two months to create as a result. Coda starts using a new chat system. And where is it at? Can you guys just guess where, where the new chat system is at? It is behind me now. That's the whole reason I swapped the whole flip flop thing before. Man, Coda, you're pissing me off, bro. Like you're pissing me off, bro. Doing the absolute most. Ball from coast to coast. Ball for, across the whole seven seas. Oh, oh, you think you're in a game, but you're on your damn knees. Damn, my motherfucker right there, he balled the most. He balled from coast to coast. He balled across seven seas. You talking about, oh, I'm in a gang. Motherfucker, you on your damn knees. <laughs> ah! Riff Raff goes crazy. Okay, everyone knows lonesome hands make for lousy homes or whatever. A lousy home makes home loners. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, brother! Are we cleaning this whole place? Yeah, what the fuck? Yeah, are we cleaning this whole place, bro? Like, what do you think this is? That's the story, little one. Oh, don't you worry now. We'll be through this mess in no time. Promise you'll wish there was more. Why don't you finish up here? In the meantime, could you please clear the table? Much nicer. That's the table I want to see. Now, would you please run in the bedroom and make the bed? Motherfucker, man, I'm leaving, bro. Like, you're on some other shit, bro. Okay, and we can't leave. You, you just got us trapped here doing chores and shit. Like, whoa, this this blanket looks nice. That's high detail, low key. I'm not mad at it. What, I gotta clean this? Straighten the whole bookshelf? Do you enjoy being a house cleaner? 
How'd you end up doing this job? Oh, I'm asking him that. Okay, my bad. Yeah, do you enjoy being a house cleaner? Well, I don't enjoy it so much as I need it. While I'm working, I feel a kind of calm that rests in the pit of my ribcage. My soul just can't be soothed any other way, it seems. Which I guess is about all that matters. Oh, that and a tidy couch. Would you straighten the pillows on the sofa out here? Bro, you really got some... Okay, I got you, bro. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I'm sorry. I'm my bad. I got you, bro. Oh, dear. It looks like someone spilled a drink over by the couch. Maybe mop that up as long as you're over there. Man, if you don't get the... F Mop, mop up the drink that's on the table. Mop the table? I feel compelled to share an incredibly cheesy personal insight. You okay with that? Make it especially cheesy. No? It was stupid, sorry. Never mind. Hey, these dishes need to be washed. Why don't you come do that? Man. Fine. What else? Last I checked, the tub needed cleaning. How about you scrub it down as best you can? No need to be perfect. We're all just human. Are there still books scattered on the floor in the bedroom? If so, put them back on the shelf. Man, how about you lick my shelf? How about that? Lick my shelf. How? These got undone. After the intense set of prison games, this house cleaning level almost feels like cleansing. It's the moment after a particularly difficult or traumatic experience where you just need to let it sit and digest inside of you and eventually cohere into something meaningful. Okay, so you just clean for the rest of eternity. I know that Koda really liked this game. Of all of his work, actually, this was the only one that he called me up to ask me to come over and look at it. This was during a period of a few months where he was like grossly happy all the time, just walked around with a constant smile on his face. Yeah, I feel like the way he's talking about Coda, man. Coda, Coda died or something. Earlier when I said I had a really cheesy thought, I was going to say that it occurred to me that one's house is a lot like one's soul. You take care of it and it takes care of you. <laughs> don't know why I felt so worried about saying that cuz you're a bitch you're bitch made I'm glad he made this I'm glad he found some peace question but do you enjoy course, this it can't last the music stops your companion is gone it's time to leave the door at the top of the hill is now open as well again you can't stay in the dark space for too long you just can't you have to keep moving it's how you stay alive Oh, nice. Here's the lamp. Which is the whole point of the puzzle doors, right? That sooner or later you have to pick up and move. I really thought that was the point of it. Loading September 2009. This one gets a bit goofy. Why did you come here today? Was it to improve your life? Was it to get a better job? Was it to make your relationships more meaningful? No. You came here to be perfect. <laughs> this workshop is going to teach you how to be perfect, class. I want your friends, the people in your life to look at you and think, wow, this person is a better human being than I am. Who do you think about that way in your own life? Uh, who do you think compared to the, okay, you're, okay. you're going too fast, bro. You're going too fast. Coda, slow down. Slow down, Coda. You guys can read it. You guys can read it. About halfway through the game, the perspective shifts. and you play as the teacher. And suddenly, you discover that your teacher is just as bigoted and afraid as you are. Oh, and also you can move around the classroom now. If you're torturing yourself, trying to find the right solutions for your life, you're not doing it right. Yep, I'll say that, sure, whatever. Seek out only one thing. What is the easiest, simple path forward? Oh, okay. He's mocking the educational system by just saying what teachers say. Yeah, it's a really simplified version of what a teacher would say. Like they'd be like, you gotta get a job and do this. But what it really is, is like take the simplest path, you know, don't try to break the molds. Okay, Coda, I see you. I felt pretty hard for this one. I feel like it's one of the most relatable experiences that you can have. 
to uh, assume that some other person is perfect and totally fulfilled in every way and completely miss all of the little flaws that make them painfully human. I think about this game a lot these days. Aw, uh, these days? See, Coda has to be gone, man. There's no way this is gonna end. Like, yep, and Coda... Yeah, we hung out yesterday. Like, this one took a lot longer than all the others for Coda to make. It was four months between this and the last one. That's twice as long as it took him to make any other game before this, and it's not like it's particularly complex, so I remember I found that a little strange at the time. All right, the performance is beginning. Places, please. In this scene, you will be playing as me. We're at the gathering of professionals. First, you'll start out leaning against this wall. Okay. Good, stay right there. The woman across the room in this chair is a professional photographer of animals. It is your dream to photograph animals professionally. This is your one chance to learn something from her, to gain something, to succeed. Go on, say something to her. Hello. Hello, that's it. That's not a conversation. It's a start. Can I get a, more dialogue, please? You need to actually converse with her. Be a human being. Do it again. Okay, I'm just going to say here are all my hopes and dreams. No, no, no. That's not what I said to her at all. You're completely missing the tone of the conversation. I was reserved, but I knew what I want. I was confident. For some reason, it was just that one moment, but I was confident. Maybe it's that you need a better feel of the setting. There's a lot of people around us. Okay, I'll give you some props to work with. These cones that bounce when you touch them will represent people nearby. Now talk to her again. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Okay. Yeah. Hey. Ooh. What are some sacrifices you've had to make? You're messing it all up again. You'll freak her out if this conversation gets that personal that quickly. Do you not realize how important this was for me? I'll never get another opportunity like this again. And something else. I, I don't I didn't see it. Hmm, I want to try something. Try stepping back from the stage. Excuse me? Should I just walk this way forever? That's how you feel? You're just gonna lock me out of the stage? Are you serious? Man, that's some old bullshit. The game ends with this eerie premonition of what's going to happen next in Coda's life. The solution to social anxiety, to fears of having to perform and having to chase success. The answer for Coda is to withdraw, to hide himself away which is what leads to scenarios like the stairs that slowed you down several games ago, where it just becomes harder and harder to access Coda's inner landscape because he keeps retreating. He just keeps backing away from possible connections to anyone other than himself. And to be honest, I didn't consider it very helpful when I first played this game. You know, it, it looked to me like he was trying to justify the idea of just disconnecting yourself from the world. And that wasn't what I wanted for him or for his games. Because I feel like a lot of his games are inviting me to connect. To connect with this person. To bring him closer. Okay. But what can you do? After this, Coda went off and took another five months to make a new game. Five months? Mobius trip. To play this game properly, you must keep your eyes closed. Coda, man, I'll play along, man, just because I, I think you're dead <laughs> and, um, you know, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Okay, I don't know what's going on. I I'm legit. I'm not going to cheat. I can't see anything. What happened? You should probably open your eyes if you haven't already. It's pretty much impossible to solve otherwise. And there is a solution, by the way. Oh, whoa. There is a solution. No, I have no idea where we are. It's over. What's going on? Speak something honest. 
I can't keep making these. Yes, that's it. That's the truth. I don't feel like it anymore. Like I said, I was getting concerned. First off, he's never been this explicit in his work about exactly what he's thinking. So where's that coming from? But then even weirder, his work has potentially stopped being an outlet for him. Not like he's having trouble iterating on ideas, but he literally just can't think of new ideas anymore. And in person, he was being a lot more distant than usual. Like, you know how sometimes a person will just deflect anything that you say in order to keep themselves disconnected all the time? It was that kind of thing. Here was the point in my relationship with Koda where I really started to wonder if he needed my help in some way. Oh no, and then, and then don't tell me Koda blasted himself, man. Don't, I don't wanna hear that, man. His games are going to get more desperate from here on out. After this game, it's almost six months before he finishes something new. Man, don't tell me Coda blasted himself, man. What is this? Is anyone there? Is that a person? How lovely. It's been a long time since I talked to anyone. What's wrong? You look lost. I'm completely out of ideas. Oh no. What happened? Did something change? There was a machine that kept me going and it stopped. Wait, you're looking for a machine? I think I know where it is. It isn't far. I need to see it to know why it stopped. If the last game featured Coda talking explicitly about his creative frustrations, this one turns it up to 11. Now, put yourself in my shoes playing this. Here's a friend whose work is exhibiting signs of struggle, frustration, anxiety, depression, even. And yet still, he keeps making games. He keeps throwing himself into the grinder even when he clearly doesn't have the energy for it anymore. Why? What is it for? From my perspective at the time and, and just what I knew of him, this was a result of how isolated he was. He was in his own little bubble, just sitting at his computer all day, not really showing these games to anyone, uh, not releasing them onto the internet. And so he didn't have anyone outside of himself to connect with. He had no outlet to ground himself on. You can't talk yourself out of loneliness. It doesn't work that way. You can't be the one writing both the questions and the answers. Then there's no movement. Then there's no circulation. If all of your anxieties are being channeled into your work, then if the work ever fails, you have no backup and you're just going to crash. Okay. We got reversed crying sounds, I believe. Seeing this game at the time that he made it, it looked really unhealthy to me. I was watching him do this to himself and I hated it. I hated seeing him so trapped. It's like, Video games are not worth this amount of suffering. This is someone I really cared about. And I used to get so much joy out of seeing him create. For him to suddenly become angry and frustrated like this, it was the worst thing for me. I don't know. This is what I felt at the time. I don't know how else to explain it. I wanted it to stop more than anything. I had never felt so rotten. I just... I needed more than I had ever needed anything for this to stop. Here's the prison. She's crying. But it didn't stop. After finishing this one, Coda takes another seven months and comes up with a new game. May 2011. The machine. What's good, guard? Glad to see you've arrived safely. We've captured the machine. It's waiting for you now. You can begin the interrogation whenever you'd like. Just be warned that someone called the press. We might have a bit of attention on this one. Also, one more thing that you should know about the machine. It calls itself something, I think. I don't know. Oh, here's the press. And of course, it's the machine. You stopped. You stopped feeding us. Those people out there, can you imagine the pain you've put them through? I've been so alone. Apologize for leaving me. No, nothing? All right, then I'll apologize to the people on your behalf. Oh, so the machine is his creative drive, his, his creative energy. Everyone. 
My friends, I have a troubling revelation. The machine refuses to admit that it deliberately hurt us. Oh, I pushed the wrong one. We will find a way to live without it. We do not need its games. Let us show it that we are not failures. Follow me. We will destroy everything that the machine has created. And here's the stage. Hello. We got that thing on us? What, what are we shooting at? What is this, Kino? Coda, I'll make sure your work dies here. I'll make sure you are known forever. I'll say known forever. So now the work is becoming self-destructive. And I'll tell you, at the time that I first played this game, shortly after he made it, here's what I'm thinking to myself. I'm thinking that Code is stuck in his own head and that it's having a very negative effect on him and that all he needs to do is just start showing his work to people to get some actual feedback on his games. It might get him out of isolation. And so, as I'm thinking this, I realize that I could be the one to initiate it. Because it would never occur to Coda to start actively soliciting feedback, so what if I did it for him? If he could see the difference it would make to have more actual conversations with other human beings, would that bring him out of his mental spiral? Would it give him confidence in himself? Would it bring meaning back into his work? So I started showing Coda's work to people. I took this one and the islands which you just played, the theater, the notes, the house cleaning game, and some of the prison escape games. I brought them to people that I knew and, and trusted. I asked their opinions. And the great part is that they really loved his games. You know, the point of it all was just to give him some external reference point, but they, they genuinely loved his work. There was nothing for him to be afraid of. Except. Put down your weapon. It's immune. See why I felt like this was the right thing to do? Because it's the thing that I always feel like I need to be told that my work is good, that I am good. When, when someone really connects with a thing that I've made, when they see themselves purely in my work, there's nothing that feels better. And I got to give that very same feeling to my friend. I did something I really felt like I'd done something good, like like I was a good person. I felt like there was a friend who was in trouble and was unhappy and, and maybe didn't like themselves, and I could fix it. If I could give him this gift, maybe I could fix the problem. When they told me how much they enjoyed his games, it was the best feeling. It was the absolute best feeling. It, it made me feel so happy, so beautifully, beautifully happy. But... But... So anyway, Coda finishes this game, and then really he just kind of takes off for a while. So this is June of 2011, and I didn't hear anything from him for several weeks, I guess. Um, and so out of nowhere, one day I get an email. No. And it's got a private link to a new game of Coda's. This one is called The Tower, and to my knowledge, it's the last game that Coda ever made. No. So let's take a look. And this is where I have trouble saying anything meaningful about Coda's work. Because more than anything else, the tower just feels distant. It feels like it's trying to distance itself from the world. It's a very cold game. This room actually has a maze in it. Except that all the walls of the maze are invisible. And then every time you touch one of the walls, there's this awful flashing and noise. So the experience is really miserable. The game goes beyond not being meant to be played. It actually seems to despise the player for trying to play it at all. But I do want to show you the rest of the level. So when you're ready to continue, press enter and I'll put a bridge over the maze. Enter. I feel like we don't know what happened to Coda, but... And to be fair, it's not like this is the first game that's needed some modification to be playable. 
like the house cleaning game. You know, that one used to actually loop the cleaning chores and you just cleaned a house forever. I had to cut it off so that you could exit the house and the game would actually end. But that game had an idea that it was actually trying to communicate. What's the deeper idea behind the invisible maze? Not wanting to let anyone the only in. The way past this challenge is to randomly guess the six digit code. Like the invisible maze, it's frustrating to me because it's the opposite of everything else that Coda has made. It doesn't encourage thought or engagement. It doesn't ask anything of me except a lot of my time. If I could have reached him during this time, then maybe I could have asked him, but I couldn't. I still don't really understand why this is here. I'll put the code on the ground for you here, though, so that we can move on. The switch to open this door is actually on the other side of the door, meaning that it's literally impossible to solve from this side. So even if you somehow brute forced your way through the first two challenges and you got to this point, there's actually just no way to progress. And it's scary for me, the idea of Coda cutting himself off entirely, just saying, you know, that's it, that's the end of the conversation, not giving me any way to fix the problem. I feel like a failure, I guess, when I can't fix the problem. But I can open this door for you, so let me do that. Okay, so everything beyond that door is, we're not even supposed to see because it's supposed to be impossible. Was I a failure for not understanding this game? I, mean, I don't know why I would be. It's not like everything needs to have a solution, but I feel it somehow. I feel like I failed and I don't understand why. I remember it's June of 2011. I'm playing this for the very first time. And as I'm playing, I'm thinking to myself, I don't know this person. I have no idea who this person is. It wasn't the guy I knew, it wasn't my friend. I had come to so many conclusions from looking at all of his work up to this point and then suddenly none of them... I had been trying to though, that was the thing. For years I was trying to get to know him, to understand who he actually was and, and what he stood for. I asked him so many times to please just tell me what his games mean to him. I asked him please to tell me what the three dots mean. And he wouldn't. And he wouldn't. I, I, don't, I don't know what to say. I'm speechless. I just felt so strongly that if I could have connected with him, that if I could have somehow made his work my own, that I would finally be once and for all happy. It was that I needed to see myself in someone else. I needed to be someone other than me. But he stopped and left. And it felt somehow like I had failed. Man, if this game ends and they're like, yeah, Coda, you know, he's just hanging out, you know, he's fine. I'll be like happy because he's all right, but I'll be like disappointed because they set this up. I'm the reason that you stopped making games, aren't I? It's because of what I did. I poisoned it for you. Wow. Dear Davey, thank you for your interest in my games. I need to ask you not to speak to me anymore. I don't think I ever told you this, but when I took your work and I was showing it to people, it actually felt... <laughs> it felt as though I were responsible for something important and valuable. I wonder at times whether you think I'm making these games for you. And the people who played them they treated me like I was important. They really listened and cared about what I had to say. Even though I was showing your work, it was... I felt good about myself. Finally. For a moment, while I had that, I liked myself. Okay, we're, we're turning the tables. You've infected my personal space so that it's possible I did begin to plant solutions in my work somewhere hidden between games. If there was an answer, a meaning, would it make you any happier? Would you stop taking my games and showing them to people against my wishes? Giving them something that is not yours to give? Violating the one boundary that keeps me safe? Oh man, don't tell me you were responsible for what I think he's gonna do. Would you stop changing my games? Stop adding lampposts to them. Okay, I thought that was Coda, but all right. And then you stopped, and I didn't have anything left to show people. I, I just had to be with myself. And as soon as that happened, there was no feeling at all. Nothing. Less than nothing. 
What does that mean? Would you simply let them be what they are? Huh. When I'm around you, I feel physically ill. You desperately need something and I cannot give it to you. I literally do not have it. Struggling to come up with new ideas is not making me depressed. Low points are just part of the process. The fact that you think I'm frustrated or broken says more about you than about me. Wow. I realize that this doesn't make sense to you just yet. Oh no. Which is fine. You're not my problem to solve. But I hope that one day it clicks and that you'll make peace with this thing that you are wrestling. So he's depressed. I'm afraid that I did something really stupid because I don't like myself. And when you finally see what I'm talking about, don't say anything. And there's nowhere to That's go. That's why I'm releasing this collection of your work, is because I haven't been able to find any other way to reach you. I've tried everything and so a part of me has hope that if I put this compilation out into the world, and if I put my name on it, that maybe enough people will play it so that it'll find its way to you, so that I can tell you that I'm sorry. I know I screwed up. If I apologize to you truly and deeply, will you start making games again? Please, I need to feel okay with myself again. And I always felt okay as long as I had your work to see myself in. I mean, is, is something wrong with me? Because I know that I did an awful thing, and I'm doing it again right now. Like, I'm, I'm showing people your work, but I can't stop myself from doing it. That's how badly I need to feel something again. Like, I'm an addict. There has to be something wrong with me. Can I apologize? What if I tell you I was wrong? Will that work? Will that fix it? I, I, I don't know. I don't think it will, but there's nothing else that I can do. Just what? The tell door me is what growing. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please. Start making games again. Please help me. Please give me some of whatever it is that, that makes you complete. I want whatever that wholeness is that you just summoned out of nothing and you put into your work. You were complete in some way that I never was. And I want to know how to doubt. I want to know how to be a good person. I want to know how not to hate myself. Please. I'm fading. And all I want is to know that I'm going to be okay. Okay. Epilogue. Well, that took um, a surprising turn. More, 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 more love, more praise, more people telling me that I'm good. Always more, more, more. It's like a disease. Okay. It's like a disease. I guess if someone had told me ahead of time that he just really enjoyed making prison games, Maybe I wouldn't have thought he was so desperate. I wouldn't have told so many people that he was depressed. He told everyone he was depressed? Even now, the disease is telling me to stop. Don't show people what a shitty person you are. They'll hate you. I'm speechless. I don't, I have no input or witty commentary. If I knew that my life depended on finding something to be driven by other than validation, what would that even be? <laughs> it's strange, but the thought of not being driven by external validation is unthinkable. Like, I actually cannot conceive of what that would be like. I feel that one a little bit. I'm on board, I feel it. What now? I think I need to go. And I'm sorry, because I know that I said that I would be here and I, and I would walk you through this, but I'm starting to feel like I have a lot of work to do. I have a lot that I need to make up for. And so I'm just gonna... Okay. Man, I'm not gonna lie. I Loki thought he was about to blast himself in the audio recording. I'm not gonna lie, man. The sky beam thing or whatever. Okay, beam me up.
Is that what his life feels like? One big maze as far as the eye can see. All right, this one has to be the thumbnail. With the sunset, fire. Let me get the angles. Project would not have been possible without the following individuals. We got Matthew, Ryan, Helena, Richard, Jesus, Lydia, Jack, and someone else. Whoops. Turn back. Written by Helena Heron. Okay, I um I don't understand. I feel like I need some more context for the ending. My understanding is that Coda was happy making games he was making. To him, they meant something, and beyond that, it didn't matter what anyone else thought. Maybe the level designs helped Coda think through problems and understand his world better. Davy, on the other hand, was focused far more on the validation, not only that he was playing a game, but that it was something that was enjoyable. Davy wanted validation from the public that he had found something that was worthwhile. Davy tied his self-worth not only only to trying to understand Coda, but to the perception of other individuals. Okay. And the thought I have been left with is that if you are doing something that makes you happy, then it doesn't matter what others think. Oh, gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. I'm on board with that. I can get behind that one. That's pretty deep deep wow that's actually really insightful see you know this is what i like this is what i like with games they open your mind you know it's not like everything is just call of duty shooting people mortal Kombat, ripping spines out you know fortnite just doing dances even though that all that stuff is cool and has its place but then like games like this man they just make you think they're almost like books it's like a good game is equal to a good book in my opinion in terms of how it can transform a person but that's just me nice game top notch man top notch material right there but anyway it's remote bry the one and only as usual like subscribe comment share and i'm out peace Get my life for the blues, for the racks. Gotta be in on a mix. Misery I can't fix. She kissed me, now my lips. In the wrist is bliss, medicine and that's a kiss.